So let me start by saying, first and foremost, it was absolutely illegal. It was an illegal hunt. It was a poaching incident. The rest is political. The reason that it hasn't come, you know, people haven't been brought to justice is our political reasons. It was illegal. And the reason I say that is because the farm where he was shot and the area where lions were hunted, there's a system in Zimbabwe, the age limit of six years old. So if a lion is shot under six, there's a penalty. So the previous year, 2014, five lions were on quota, four of which were shot under age. Only one of them was over the age of six. One of them was 2.2 years old, according to the x-ray tooth. So the lionesses he was with were not his females, but his mother and his sisters. So the penalty for shooting four out of five underage lions was no quota for 2015. Period. The rest is all, f you know, frills. There was no lion on license for 2015. So Cecil was wearing a satellite GPS collar. Um, even in Zimbabwe these days, I can get onto a 3G network and I can check where that lion is. And his collar is taking a GPS location every two hours. If, he, if his last point was at 10 minutes past 8 and I log on at 11 minutes past, I'm one minute behind that lion. I can see him on a satellite image. I can just see a little blue dot that represents where Cecil was. So every morning I'm having coffee with my wife, checking where the lion is. But on the 4th of July, no data. The 3rd of July, data was fine, looked normal. 4th of July, nothing. If any of you know the story in detail, he was actually killed on the 1st of July. So bank that, because I'm going to come back to that. So he's killed on the 1st, but on the 4th, his collar stops working. So anyway, there's no lion on quota. I assume the battery in his collar has died, so I just make a mental note. I'm going to catch that lion when I see him next time. Three days later, on the 7th of July, a professional guide comes to my house and says, Brent, um, we've heard a rumor that a big lion's been killed. So, of course, my stomach just drops. I immediately know it's Cecil. I quickly go back onto my phone and pull up the data for the 4th, and I can see where the collar's been moving, and then it sat stationary for several hours and then didn't send another point. So that, to me, means... He's walked, he's feeding on a bait, he's killed, and the collar's destroyed. So I send those GPS locations to the National Parks Authority, and they race there and start investigating. As it turns out, from the statements and from various other pieces of evidence, he was killed on the morning of the 2nd of July. The night of the 1st of July, he came to a bait with Jericho, and Walter Palmer shot him with the first arrow from a compound bow. He runs off wounded. They decide, because it's a bow hunt, you don't really want to follow him at night now that he's in the bushes. He's wounded. Often you hear hunters say, let him bleed out, let him feel it. We'll come back and get him in the morning. So they go to camp, a couple of gin and tonics perhaps, hit the sack have breakfast in the morning, and at 9 o'clock the next day, go and look for Cecil. Well, he's not far. He's a couple of hundred meters from the elephant where they find him, and they finish him with a second arrow. In the press, they said they shot him with a rifle to finish him off. That's inaccurate. He was shot with a second arrow. And that's a key point because that speaks to the, the motive behind this hunt. They finished him off with a second arrow because... Walter Palmer was looking for the world's biggest lion and he wanted the bow hunting record. If that lion was finished off with a rifle, the license or the, the record would be disqualified. So they had to wait, leave that lion wounded all night so that they had good light and they could find that lion in a situation where they could finish him off with an arrow. Once they see the, uh, the lion's dead, they walk up, they see the collar, and they panic. This is a statement that the professional hunter in Zimbabwe made. Walter Palmer panics and runs. He takes the collar off the lion, hangs it in a tree, and goes running after his client to console him. 
when he, he said he came back and the collars vanished. No truth in that at all. He's obviously paid someone to walk that collar around for two days. We've analyzed that data, and after the point that it's taken off the lion, it's diligently moved to mimic a lion's movement. It goes to a water hole, comes back to underneath the bush for four hours, walks up a road, comes back, back to the water. And that's a ruse to try and confuse me that the lion is still alive while they get the client out of the country. Completely illegal. They knew it was illegal. They should have had a National Parks ranger with them, no ranger, on a lion hunt. They should have had a ranger if it was a bow hunt, no ranger present, no TR2s, no documents. They came in there to shoot a lion illegally. They would normally destroy the collar. Um, we've had that in the past where the collar is just destroyed and we've got, we'll never find that. But this was the new technology. That collar could speak to my phone remotely. That's the only reason we found out. So the rest is history. You know all about it. It is a step in the right direction because what, it's, what these two resolutions are seeking to do is they're seeking to make sure that trophy hunting is based on sound science and we need scientists to give us the truth and, uh, and not allow science to be uh, perverted in, for the sake of hunting. It seeks to make sure that Trophy hunting is non-detrimental to the survival of the species. It seeks to make sure that there are demonstrable conservation benefits. It seeks to make sure that trophy hunting is based on accurate and for CITES Appendix 1 species approved quotas. That trophy, and it also, and importantly, does seek to make sure that trophy hunting is no longer exempt from CITES under what's called the personal and household effects exemption. It's just something you picked up on the way to the aeroplane. So, what will the impact of those draft resolutions be? Well, they won't end trophy hunting. And I personally can't wait for that day. But it is my hope that it will reduce the number of animals killed through the mechanisms that have been described, it will bear down on the industry, reduce the possibility of criminal, illegal activity. Although I have to say, having heard Brent's story of Cecil and having heard the full story, I have my doubts. When someone is on a mission, once that record has their sights set on a specific animal, it appears they will go to extraordinary lengths, including breaking the law probably several times. But none of what we've seen in the film will be impacted by the proposed revisions that I've suggested to the trophy hunting regulations under CITES. Now that's not to say that canned hunting, what we've seen, doesn't have an impact on lions, wild lions. I have little doubt that the international trade in canned hunting products from captive bred lions stimulates demand for lion body parts and puts yet another pressure on the 20,000 wild lions that are left. And that's something we've learned from studies into tiger farming at CITES. The parallel markets, as we call it, where you have a captive industry breeding a species that is highly desirable in the wild puts a premium on wild, the wild individual. People pay more for a wild tiger part than they pay for a tiger, a farmed tiger part. And to give you a little evidence, and it's only a snapshot, I received this news just in the last 48 hours. I won't say exactly who it's from, but those of you who know Africa will probably, probably guess. In the past two years, the demand for full lion carcasses has escalated here in Mozambique. 
the price for a full lion carcass is now 1,500 US dollars. And this year we have the first photographic evidence of lion bones in the hands of poachers we've arrested. So, the question I have is, can we bring what we've just seen to an end? Well, this is what the IUCN, and this is a little longer, but this is what the IUCN, the world's biggest conservation science organization, recommends. The World Conservation Congress, at its session in Hawaii in the United States of America, and it happened at the start of this month, requests the Secretary General and the IUCN commissions to encourage specifically the South African government, as well as all other Southern African governments, to support this initiative by drafting and enacting legislation by 2020 and giving reasonable time frames to terminate the practice of breeding lions in captivity for the purpose of canned shooting through a structured, time-bound process. Restrict captive breeding of lions to registered zoos or registered facilities whose documented mandate is as a recognized registered conservation project. C, develop norms and standards for the management of captive bred lions in South Africa that address welfare, biodiversity, and utilization aspects taking into account threatened or protected species regulations, that's the TOPS regulations, legislation, and IUCN guidelines governing this activity. Legally prohibit the hunting of captive bred lions under any conditions. That's what the IUCN says. And the IUCN, to be fair, is not known for its big heart on welfare issues. It tries to stick very rigorously to the science, but that is a pretty compassionate and well-framed agenda, albeit for 2020. So the simple question that follows from that is, the international conservation science community wants canned hunting to end. The humane movement wants it to end. The great majority of global citizens want canned hunting to end. Even the Professional Hunters Association wants canned hunting to end. This is what the South African government currently says. In South Africa's draft biodiversity management plan for lions dated April 2015, it estimates there are 6,000 captive lions in South Africa, and it states, amongst other things, there is intense controversy over the merits and ethics of the captive breeding and subsequent release for hunting of captive bred lions, although it remains legal to do so. Captive lions are used exclusively to generate money and currently have limited conservation value Managers actively manipulate all vital rates and demographics. This is simply not good enough. Not for the modern, civilized, open, inclusive rainbow nation. In the main, it is an internal issue. South Africa has to assemble its legal framework that will bring canned hunting to a close. It has to have a plan to guarantee minimum levels of humane care for the lions currently in canned hunting facilities, it has to bring in an immediate cessation of all exports of canned hunting products, and above all, it has to show the political will to end this despicable practice that brings shame on the nation and all humanity. It is a moral issue, and we as a species will be judged by what we do for it.